The Ontario government's plan to increase classroom sizes is causing a lot of concern. But our next guest feels the biggest issue facing Canadian schools today is something more complex than just a number. Joining us now from Halifax is Paul Bennett, a former principal and the director of Schoolhouse Consulting. Paul, thanks for talking to us. Good morning, Kelsey. So Ontario's education minister got a lot of reaction when she stated that increased class sizes would, quote, improve students' resiliency. What was your reaction to that? There's really no support or basis for making such claims. But in the field of education, there is so little research out there that people can get away with almost anything. I just thought it was uh, unfounded, and there's no research to support that claim. There is research, though, when we look at uh, classroom composition. Uh, there's been a lot of focus on the number of kids in class, but, but you feel that we really need to look at who's making up the classroom as, uh, in terms of student success. Can you explain that to our viewers? Today's classrooms are incredibly complex, and teachers face an array of challenges, one of them being the size of the class, but increasingly there's a concern about who's in that class. And the average class today is composed of a far different mixture than it was, say, 20 years ago. And teachers find that uh, just keeping control, let alone reaching the kids, is an everyday challenge. So what makes a successful classroom, Paul? What makes a successful classroom is the right combination of an effective teacher, appropriate class sizes, and a composition that makes it easier to reach each and every student and serve them well. What we've got going on in Ontario and in other provinces is a debate over not just class sizes, but who's in those classes and how easy or difficult it is to reach them on a day-to-day -day basis. If class size uh, doesn't impact student achievement as much as we, we think it might, what does class size affect? Well, there's a lot of research on lowering class sizes. The class size reduction initiatives in the early 2000s have really um, not borne the benefits that we thought. We thought there would be improvements in student achievement. But for the amount of resources and investment in reducing class sizes, you don't see those benefits. In, class, in fact, John Hattie, in his research, indicated that um, reducing class sizes uh, has minimal effect on student achievement. There are other side benefits. But the reason we keep talking about class sizes is it's a proxy for other problems besetting today's teachers. What kind of problems would those be? Those are really dealing with the variety of challenges in front of you each and every day. In a typical class of, say, 30, you might have half that have severe learning challenges. Some have complex needs, including autism. There might be some who have uh, language difficulties, the newly arrived. You have chronic absenteeism. So simply uh, teaching uh, today is, is a challenge. And uh, so over time, class sizes have been reduced. Um, I think in part to try to address some of the difficulties of teaching in the everyday classroom. Paul, thank you so much. You're, you're making it very clear that this, there isn't a clear answer to this. It's a, it's a complex conversation that obviously needs to continue. And we appreciate your perspective this morning. Thank you for the opportunity of being on the show.